Hello and welcome to one of our favorite programs here at Secrets Unsealed and Some TV, and that is I'd Like to Know. My name is C.A. Murray. You know, and it occurs to me that there are certain things we all like to do. Uh, my wife likes to garden. Uh, I'm not a big gardener. I think, Pastor Boy, you like to garden. Yeah, I like the garden on the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much I where I am. I like too. the garden when it gets to the no, table. I do like gardening, too. <laughs> yeah, you have a small garden in your house. And, and Pastor Salazar, our uh, general manager of Some TV Latino, uh, you like to build. Yes, you know. that's right. Um, so we all have things we like to do. I'll tell you what I like to do, actually, gentlemen. I like to vacuum. There's something about vacuuming. Really? Uh, my, my, my wife says you vacuum too much. But putting on the vacuum and hearing that, that roar going across the carpet and <laughs> the floor, just, it's, 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 it's kind of strange. Yeah, maybe the only one who likes to vacuum. I'm I sure that Irma like is happy that you like to vacuum. Well, she, she says I actually vacuum too much. <laughs> My point being, gentlemen, is that there are certain things we like to do, and one of the things I think we universally like to do is to answer the questions that come in on this program. Amen. Amen. This is one of our, our favorite uh, pastimes and enterprises. I think we like Sabbath school also. <clears throat> that gives us a chance to, to right. discuss the Word of God. And we like to discuss the Word of God in concert, one with the other. It's, it's fun coming together, answering your questions, seeing what's on your mind, on, in your heart, and then answering those questions from the Word of God. And we make you this promise each and every time we do this program that when we do answer the questions, they will be from the Word of God. It's a little late in the history of this world to be uh, listening to man's opinion. You want to hear a word from the Amen. Lord. And we promise that you will hear that word when you send in the question. We will take Amen. our time with them. We will not try to rush through them, but we want to give due deference and due diligence to all of your questions so that when the question is answered, you've got a good handle on what the Word of God has to say Amen. about that particular issue. So we promise you to do that. Should you want to get in on the fun, we ask you, we beg you, we importune you, send your questions into TV at some TV, S U M as in Mary, TV dot O R G. It is on the screen right before you. TV at some TV dot O R G. And we will get to your questions as soon as we can. I know sometimes there's a little bit of frustration if a person doesn't hear their question in one or two weeks. That's because the pile of questions that we are getting is fairly impressive and fairly thick. So we are working our way through them. They are coming in from all around the world, and we thank God for that, gentlemen. Amen. Uh, that we are getting viewership and buy-in from across the planet. And uh, we, we invite you, when you send in your question, if you'd let us know where you're coming from, uh, the country, the region of the world, we'd appreciate that because it gives us an idea of the viewership and the reach and the footprint of this particular ministry. So do that, if you will. And uh, we promise we'll get to your questions just as soon as we can. And uh, you hold on. We'll get to them. Pastor Boy, if you would offer a prayer for us. We will launch out. We've got one or two questions that uh, were left over from the last program. Then we've got another new batch of questions here that we want to take a look at. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are so thankful that you have given us your word. Amen. In a world that is so confused, mm. you have given us certainty and answers to our questions through the written word. Amen. Amen. We ask that as we open that word today to answer these questions that you will give us wisdom and that you will give us speech to speak the truth. Amen. And we also ask that you will be with those who are watching this program that they might be blessed. Amen. And we thank you for the promise of your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. and amen. All right. We have one from Kayla or Kyla uh, Munoz. And um, she wants to know, uh, she's talking to us at, uh, here at um, i Like to Know. Have a couple of questions. One, at what point did Eve lose her light? Did she lose it immediately or when Adam sinned? And uh, we'll look at the second one also. I've heard that if Adam had not sinned, that somehow he could have redeemed Eve. Yet I never hear how they come by this conclusion. Is this true? If so, uh, would you please explain? So, gentlemen, uh, one, when did Eve lose her light? And then, two, um, uh, could Adam have, uh, let's see, I have heard that if Adam had not sinned, that he could have redeemed Eve. Um, so that's the second question. Let's look at the first one first. When did, when did Eve lose her light? Well, I believe that in the Bible, 
uh, we go to Genesis 3, uh, it sort of gives us an idea of when that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, because in verse, remember they were clothed with a light. Uh, the Spirit of Prophecy clears that or makes us very clear, but we know that they were not, n they were, they were, the Bible says that they were naked, but they were not ashamed, meaning they were not revealing their nakedness. Something was covering them. That's in verse 25 of chapter 2. Uh -huh. But chapter 3 of Genesis, and you see that in verse 7, after the husband, verse 6, after he ate of the food, it says in verse 7, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So we see that the removing or the vanishing of the light happened almost simultaneously. They both were at the same time, both realized, oh, now we are without our clothes. And then they decided. So the fact is, from the Bible, we can see that she did not lose by herself the light or the, or the covering. And then I think uh, we can also go to Spirit Prophecy and we'll see there in chapter 3 of Patriots and Prophets, ver uh, page 56, that, uh, and I'll read this just so that it can be very clear. It says, Eve, when she went to give the fruit to Adam, says, Eve was before <coughs> him as beautiful and apparently as innocent as before this act of disobedience. She expressed greater love for him than before. No sign of death appeared in her, and he decided to, to brave the consequences. He sees the fruit and quickly ate. And this is one way we can see that she did not lose. You know, she appeared as beautiful and as innocent as before. So, I don't think, you know, I, it really clears that they did not, or she did not lose the, the covering of light, her garment, uh, but after Adam actually took take of the fruit. It's significant that in the Bible, Adam is held accountable uh, uh, for introducing sin into the world, uh, not that's Eve. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's significant. So mm -hmm. apparently she did not lose her covering of light until Adam sinned. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when Adam sinned, they both Mm -hmm. uh, lost their light right. and made themselves coverings. Uh, the second question is also answered in this same page. Um, and uh, it says, she was a part of himself, that is a part of Adam, and he could not endure the thought of separation. Mm -hmm. He did not realize that the same infinite power who had from the dust of the earth created him a living, beautiful form and had in love given him a companion could supply her place. That's right. So at least we know that God could have supplied her place. Now, I have not been able to find anything uh, in the Bible about whether God would have redeemed Eve or not. The assumption is that probably He would, but how He would do it when Adam was faithful and Eve wasn't, I think those are questions we're going to have to ask Jesus when we, when we sit at His feet uh, under the tree of life. Mm -hmm. Unless you guys know of any, <laughs> any source uh, uh, that I don't know about concerning whether God is going to redeem Eve or not. Yeah, there were, the, I, I saw nothing there and, and I uh, came across that same page. The tentacles of that understanding are quite long. For those who, who don't believe in male headship, who don't believe in God placing a certain responsibility on the man, mm -hmm. um, things were not finalized the situation was not deemed unredeemable until Adam sinned. There was mm -hmm. still something redeemable about that situation, which is why Eve had not lost her light yet. There was another mm -hmm. solution. Mm -hmm. Adam just couldn't see his way to that solution. Mm -hmm. He couldn't see past uh, uh, the problem to a God who could had a solution for that problem. Mm -hmm. And so he, he ate, uh, and at that point, it became unredeemable. Mm -hmm. They both lost their light. And of course, the, the set of circumstances that we now find ourselves in began at, at that point in time. Amen. Clearly, Adam was the head of the race. Yes. No doubt whatsoever, because God held him accountable. When you go to Romans chapter 5, yes. it says, sin entered the world by one, one man. One man, yes. And yes. death through sin. Mm -hmm. so, so that is absolutely clear that there is headship absolutely. Uh, before sin. Yeah. You know, the thing that, 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 sort of gums up the works when it comes to headship is the, the, the fact that those who are called to be head do such a bad job at it. Mm 
you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When, when we, we talk about Christ and God and Christ aligned himself as, as being inferior to God, mm -hmm. we, we think of subjection, we think of, of lording it over, we think of slavery, we think of all of these kinds of right. synonyms which don't really fit, you know. Uh, if, if, if those who are called to be head would do a better job at being head, then the mm -hmm. idea of headship wouldn't be so onerous to people. But it's, 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 it, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth when you think of the situations that exist on earth as it is currently constructed. Yeah, right. yeah headship that, is not a true. bad thing. Somebody's got to take the lead uh, and somebody's got to follow. And if, yeah. if, if God the Father and God the Son decide together, this is how we're going to work this, things out, this mm -hmm. thing out, it's not a bad thing mm -hmm. and it's not a negative thing. If it was a bad thing, then uh, uh, the relationship between the Father and the Son would not be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Because right. Uh, we are told clearly in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3 that the head of Christ is God. Is God. But, but the Father loves the Son, so it's very simple for the Son to subject okay. himself to the Father's authority voluntarily. Uh, you know, uh, in uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 5, mm -hmm. uh, verse 22, it says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that would be very easy if uh, the husbands did what uh, verse 25 says. Yes. Love husbands, wives. love your wives. Yes. Just yes. as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So if the husband was loving and kind and provided for the needs of the wife and everything, the wife would have no issue with being subject to the authority of mm -hmm. the husband. Mm -hmm. But it's because husbands have abused their headship authority that women have reacted uh, and uh, said, we will not submit. Yes. Amen. Yes. When I was working on my, my uh, doctorate degree, I identified... Um, and, and name several kinds of authority. One is positional authority. Mm -hmm. That's like you are the president of the ministry. Mm -hmm. that, that title, president, gives you certain prerogatives. Sure. If you were to leave and someone else would assume presidency, those prerogatives would pass to that person because the power is in the position, not necessarily right. the person. Right. Then there is what I call deferent authority. Deferent authority is the authority you give someone uh, because you know they have your best interest at heart. So I feel this way, you feel this way, hmm. but you've always been right in the past. And I know that when you make a decision, it is for your good, but also for mine. So I defer to you. I hmm. give you that authority because you're going to make the best, the best of the situation. Right. That's deferent authority. Then it's also, also referent authority, um, which means um, I have the power to make a decision, but I will run it by you. You know, that's re I'll run it, but I'll refer to you just to get some input from you so that my, mm -hmm. my decision is, is, is balanced. Well, uh, in heaven, all of those exist. Position, deferent, and referent. Because we know that uh, John 1030, very simple text, I and my Father are one. So mm -hmm. we think alike, we act alike, we move alike. Mm -hmm. So there is no subjugation in the authority that God exercises over the Son because they are, uh, at, 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 uh, they are agreed in all that they do. Uh, as, re as respects mankind. Amen. So it's a good question. It's a really uh, good, good question. All right. Um, now this is our new batch, and this one is coming from Bulgaria. So we've got, we got uh, viewers in Bulgaria. This is Philip Dragolov uh, from Bulgaria. Uh, great to hear from you, Philip. He wants to know, what was the critique of Desmond Ford against the investigative judgment, and how do you respond to it? Uh, that's a, that's, <laughs> yeah. we're going back a few years. And you remember during that time, you had a lot of, you had Desmond Ford, you had uh, on the heels of the Brimsmead controversy, uh, you had Walter Ray during that time, mm -hmm. you had the Holy Spirit as a woman controversy. I mean, the 70s were really, really controversial. Uh, <laughs> controversial. And I think Desmond Ford, because he had so many students, he was teaching, uh, and there was, there was this whole generation of pastors who came up under him and so the yep. tentacles of his disaffection just went throughout the church and and sort of stuck with the church for a long long time and we are feeling the effects of that even till today absolutely uh perhaps until that generation of pastors retires and moves off it will always sort of be with us but what was his issue <laughs> as you recall pastor and uh, uh, you were a I little young back I then. Was not even born. <laughs> 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 well, well, we were. <laughs> yes. Well, the bottom line 
of his objection to the investigative judgment was that it takes away our assurance of salvation. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the bottom line. Because he believed that when you're justified uh, by Christ, um, it's almost like uh, once saved, always okay. saved. Mm -hmm. You're secure mm -hmm. uh, because of justification. Uh, and your works, your behavior doesn't have anything to do directly with your salvation. You know, sanctification is the result, but it doesn't mm -hmm. have anything to do with uh, justification. And, um, <coughs> and so he said, you know, if, there, if the time comes when we're going to have to be before God's judgment bar to render an account of our works, well then, you know, if our works don't measure up, yeah. uh, our salvation is threatened. So basically that's the bottom line of everybody know. who criticizes the investigative judgment. Mm -hmm. Right. But the Bible tells us very clearly that believers are going to be judged before the second coming. Yeah. That's right. Let's read uh, 2 Corinthians 5 verse uh, 10. And let's remember that Paul is writing to believers. He's writing this to believers. Correct. It reads there, For we must all appear before mm -hmm. the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. So who is judged? Everyone. Everyone, everyone who believes. Yeah, mm -hmm. including everybody who believes, of course. That is in the pre-advent investigative judgment. During yes. the millennium, after the millennium, Everybody's well, you yeah. know, we participate in the judgment during the millennium and after the millennium, the wicked will see their cases. But, but before the second coming, the Apostle Paul says to the Corinthians, we believers must all appear, must must all all appear. appear before the judgment seat of Christ uh, to give an account on the things that we did, that's our acts, mm -hmm. whether they're good or evil. Over the evil. Now, why does God need an investigative judgment before the second coming? Doesn't He already know from eternity past who's going to be saved and who's going to be lost? Yes. And that's the big question that is asked. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Pastor, it's, it's a reason of showing transparency to His character. Trans is, is a judgment that also will satisfy not only the, the requirements of the universe as a whole to see that people who believe in Christ have been found worthy to be him, with Him for they have given up their love of the world, their love of sin, but is also to secure, you know, precisely that the universe will never fall into another experience as such as this, as, as sin. You know, that God can deal with the sin issue, remove the sin problem from the universe, but it has to be open, it has to be transparent, it has to be shown clearly that those that profess to have Christ, to have accepted Jesus, are not only just defied for that believe in Him, but have allowed His life to transform their hearts. So it, it's, it's, it's a process, it's not just, you know, just because God wants to make a judgment, but it's really because it needs to be done for the purification to, the, to sanctify His people uh, through this process of investigating their lives. And I think that, you know, the judgment that, you know, that the idea of people going against the judgment, having a problem with the judgment, still we see today, many, many Adventists, uh, sadly, are, are really, and you know, uncomfortable with that concept of judgment because they feel that, oh, my life is coming before the Lord. I may have something, you know, that is not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not 100% perfect, whatever it is. And, and that, that fear of the judgment is really what turns them off and they rather not deal with it or, or, or say that is wrong, but it's not the case. Yeah, the bottom line is that the judgment before the second coming is only of those who ever profess the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that. When Jesus comes, He's going to take the faithful ones to heaven. But before He takes them to heaven, He has to do the judgment to show that they are worthy right. to enter heaven. There's no urgency with the wicked because their cases are going to be examined later. Mm -hmm. um, it, in the church, there are good and bad fish. Yes. <laughs> the boat is the church. How you sort it out. There's good and bad fish. When they get to the shore in the parable of Jesus, what happens? You separate yes, absolutely. the good fish from the bad fish. In you have wheat and tares. Mm -hmm. That's a good part. When, does the wheat and, uh, when is the separation of wheat and tares? 
at the end of the age. Yes. There's the investigative judgment. In the church there are wise and foolish virgins. Do all of them claim to be followers of Christ? They do. Yes, they sure. Do. But is there, uh, are there some that are not really genuine believers? Absolutely. Sure. Mm -hmm. Are there those who say, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name, perform miracles in your name, prophesy in your name? Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Yet they profess Jesus. Yes. There are people who have a form of godliness, but don't have the power of godliness. So the purpose of the judgment is to reveal before the universe hmm. who Jesus has a right to take to heaven. That's right. Because there are people who appear to be good, but inside there were problems. Mm -hmm. And the judgment will show that the, particular the, the heart, detail. You know, read, read right. Where the heart is, where the heart was, and yes. the actions, you know, if they follow along with that profession. Because the judgment will also involve the secret things, according to yes. Ecclesiastes 12, exactly. yeah. verse uh, 13, and right. 14. 13 and 14. It yeah. says even the secret the things, things of the, the heart. heart. Yeah, absolutely. So it doesn't take away our assurance of salvation as long as we remain and abide in Christ. If we're not abiding in Christ, then you have a reason to worry. <laughs> but if we're abiding in Christ, we can be sure that Jesus is going to represent us in the judgment as long as we repent and confess our sins and, uh, and you know, trust in the merits of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit overcome. Uh, we have nothing to fear in the judgment because Jesus is going to be our defender. Absolutely. Another thing that, I, again, I'm not 100% uh, familiar with every you know, pe person that went through this experience at the time of Desmond Ford's, uh, you know, height. But uh, you can see from the most part, those that reject the concept of the investigative judgment, you can see their lives eventually will turn against, I mean, go away from the Lord. They uh, start embracing not just that false doctrine, but everything else they rejecting. There's a lot of uh, confusion in the minds of those that don't believe in, in our doctrine of investigative judgment and they oppose to it. You will see that their lives fall into bigger sin and bigger sin. And, and that's kind of the sad part about it, you know. It's, it's, it's like you shut down the Holy Spirit that impresses your heart that this is something true, that you are to go through judgment if you profess the name of Jesus. So. That's correct. You know, mm -hmm. as it occurred to me, because I, I remember one of the other things that, uh, one of the side issues I, of, um, doesn't afford is that when Christ left, he went directly into the most holy. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't, he, there was no first apart, ap, apartment ministry of Christ. Uh, so then investigative judgment started as he left. One of the things that occurs to me, and, and I like what you just said, technically, when Christ comes again, everyone, every person who's ever lived's case will be decided because those who are going to go to heaven will go to heaven. Right. If if you don't go, <laughs> it's because you're not going. You of know, there's, there's not another another case. Of course. Now, what we will do later on, in First Corinthians tells us, we'll judge. We will look and see that everything that God did was fair. I'm Judgment that, review. That review. Preci <laughs> precisely. Ju well said. <laughs> you know, we'll see that everything and those who didn't go shouldn't have gone. That's right. And those who did go should have gone. Mm -hmm. So that we will see that God is fair. And, and I like the idea of transparency mm -hmm. because, you know, I believe God doeth all things well. Amen. But God's not going to say, well, we're going to go with your belief. He's, I'm going to show you. You know, I'm going to give you the, the chapter and verse of, of every person so that you know that I did things fairly. Absolutely. The thing that, that encourages me is that God is not trying to keep us out of kingdom. He's trying to get us Absolutely. in. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. and if there's any way he can get us in short of breaking the law because that would make, Christ's death worthless, uh, hmm. uh, he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's going to do it because he loves us. He wants to get us in. Well, so we start with the books in our favor. Amen. Uh, and all we have to do is stop fighting him and surrender to him and he will save us. Amen. Yeah. You Amen. know, um, how would you feel about going before a judge hmm. and without any review of the evidence, the judge says, guilty. Yeah. What, what would people say? Hmm, who knows whether that person was guilty or not? There yeah. was no trial. Mm -hmm. So there would be questions about the judge. Very much so. But God's system of jurisprudence is the same system that is used in democratic governments today. First, you have a review of the evidence, the trial, mm -hmm. so that everybody can see it. Secondly, 
based on the investigation of the evidence, you have the sentence or the verdict. And then the time comes when the verdict is implemented. Yes. Executed, yeah. In actuality. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the way that God does. He considers us innocent until, until we are proven guilty yes. in yes. a court of law. Mm -hmm. God is not less just Amen. than human beings. <laughs> God will give His people their time in court. Amen. He, he does the same process, Inveta investigation or trial, mm -hmm. the verdict, guilty or not guilty, depending on what came forth in the trial, mm -hmm. and then the execution of the sentence. And in the case of the righteous, the execution of the sentence, we usually think of execution in a bad sense, somebody's <laughs> executed. But the execution of the sentence right. means implementing the sentence, Precisely. Mm -hmm. which uh, the dead in Christ will rise, and those who are alive will be transformed, and then they will be taken for a thousand years to heaven, and then we will do a judgment review. Yes. Why those who were left behind mm -hmm. uh, were left behind. Absolutely. Uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, uh, like an instant replay. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. does a, the instant replay change the play? No. 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 It just shows whether whether the uh, umpire got the call right. 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 Of course. <laughs> and so that's what's going to happen during the millennium. It, it's kind of like what the work of an auditor. That's right. You know, an audit does an auditor cook the books? No. 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 The, the auditor of the books. Priest. as the purpose of seeing if the rec records of the books were kept properly. And so with God, during the thousand years, God isn't going to say, oh, wait a minute, we should have brought that guy down there. No. <laughs> forgot. Everything that yeah. God decided will be proven. Absolutely. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, this happens sometimes. Sometimes we take one program to do one question because of the import of the question. We invite you to keep on writing, to keep on watching. Our time has fast slipped into eternity. Allow me in closing to wish you both grace and peace through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye and God bless. See you later.